Well, thanks for joining. Just a quick intro. Um, so we did the first Milos lecture last month. This is the second of the lecture in the four lecture series uh, from January to, uh, to April. So um, stay tuned. You know, every um, we're thinking last week of every month. So two more to go, March and April. Uh, we'll send out the invites too. Okay. I'll, I see you correct <laughs> your name. Um, I'll give give the mic to, to you, Milos, please. Uh, please take it away. Okay, thank you, Malik. Uh, good evening, everybody. And welcome uh, to the class. And thanks, everybody, for the joining. Last time, we did some uh, technical stuff. There was some games which showed us how to attack. But for today, I prepared a more positional topic, uh, bad pieces. So if you are ready, uh, we can start uh, with, uh, with uh, materials and positions uh, for everybody who, uh, who joined first time on my class. Special welcome. And... I am Milos Tankovic, international master from Serbia, and nice to meet you. So let's start. This is the game between Russian grandmaster, Soviet grandmaster Kotov and Kazdan Isaac who was player from United States. Uh, thanks to the structure, I think there was a Greenfield Indian defense because uh, Black had the uh, Fianchetto and the uh, pawns on E7 and F7. DNC pawns uh, are traded which is very characteristical for this opening. So the topic is a bad piece. Uh, which piece uh, seems to be worse in black, uh, worse in black position? What do you think? Uh, okay, so please try to to discuss with me more than last time. If you have uh, any idea, just feel free to join your mic to, to uh, unmute your mic and tell what your opinion is or to write me on chat box. So let's see which piece is the worst in black position. Probably the knight. Uh, why the knight? Knight is uh, restricted by the pawns, but uh, I think uh, if we leave him for some time, he will uh, he will find uh, a good square for himself. Okay, the rook, yeah, I agree the rook uh, is passive on b7, but uh, the right answer is bishop. Um, bishop is uh, completely restricted by our pawn chain e3, d4, and he doesn't have many good diagonal for himself. So uh, let's uh, read the intro introduction for this position. Concept for playing when opponent has uh, one more bad pieces are known. It's natural we should uh, prevent its activation and to play on opposite side if possible exchanging opponents other active pieces. 
So try active basis for active and uh, stay with active basis uh, against passive one. Uh, our first, okay, where are the bad pieces? Actually, this is trivial. And here is what happened. White created black dark square bishop locked out. So bishop takes e6 first move, f takes e6. Does uh, anybody have idea how to continue the game now? What is the next step in uh, converting uh, advantage? Okay, James said uh, rook c7, and uh, it makes sense. But um, rook b8 is the move. I will try to show you the difference between these two moves. A rook c7, maybe black can play rook b6. And if we take this pawn, he probably should unpin himself by playing king g8. And after that, he can make a good counterattack by pushing b pawn and uh, making the passer on queen side, which is very strongly supported by the rook. So, James, your idea was very good. But you have to do this on another way. Rook b8. Now, if black wants to keep rooks on the board, he has to sacrifice b5 bone. And there is no more uh, possible to make past pawn on, uh, on queen side. So after, for instance, rook a7, rook b5, white is simply winning because bishop is still stuck here. And uh, we just we will just take a4 pawn and uh, literally we are piece up. So black has to take and try to play b4. Okay, Meli, I think so, someone wants to to join the lesson, so... We just let that is. Yeah, yeah, okay, thanks. After b4, what uh, Black wants to do? If white play, for instance, g4, what is the black continuation? Pawn b3, James, okay. And after a takes b3.
Do you just go pawn a3? Yeah, pawn a3 and uh, we can stop the promotion. Yeah. So, because of that, king should enter the box, king d3. Now, if he plays this one, we are on time with our king. And position is simply winning. He's trying to find the good position and activate his bishop by bishop h6. But how to restrict that? F4 exactly. G5. Yeah, G3 maybe. I think uh, we just uh, need not to take on on g5 because uh, after that we are opening possibilities for dark square bishop if we leave uh, him to take on, on uh, f4 after e takes f4 he is still restricted so even king c4 is enough but to move from the game was g4 and after takes, takes, g takes f4, e takes f4, white sets bishop on e5 and destroys pawns on queen side. After this, king goes to d7 with advancing g pawn, white sets, and a little two pawn. Any pawn endgame is just lost for black. Therefore, black resigned. Okay, that was some. Uh, basic and simple position. Well, let's go with the next one. Uh, we have a similar situation here. Black dark square bishop is stuck in on g7. But if black plays bishop f5 and f6, he will open the diagonal and the bishop from g7 becomes a monster. How to prevent this scenario? Okay, I see some uh, moves here. Okay, Israel, you are right. Knight takes e6 is the move. So, in this structure, e7 pawn can't be moved. So, maneuver bishop f8, bishop c5, or b4 is uh impossible so only chance to open up this bishop is to crush the bone chain on uh, f4 but it's not so easy to achieve because we have bishop c4 
he has to defend this pawn. Otherwise, we'll be pawn up and bishop bear advantage, which is more than enough for convert. This is decisive material advantage. So only way to defend the pawn is knight f8. And what we should prevent right now? Who are the players in this game? Uh, the players in this game uh, were international master from Serbia, Zlatanovic Borolub, and uh, some players from 2400 Elop. Muelim was his surname. So they are not, not so famous, but they are solid and respectable players. So what is the only way for black to crush this bone chain f4, e5 to undermine it? g5? g5, exactly. So we should prevent this possibility. Does anybody have idea how to do that? H4? H4, exactly. Now we'll take on, on G5 by H pawn. Playing the H6 is not so not so good because we will after we will play probably king uh, H6, probably king E2, and after G5, we can take here, take one pair of the rook and the G3. So we are still keeping the, the pawn chain stable. We traded a pair of pieces, but uh, black stays with the problem of dark square bishop. So we are, by simplifying the position, we are just closer to easy winning endgame. Here, Black decided to play b5, and after bishop b3, a5. So he wants to organize some counterplay on queen side. What will be our reaction here? Pop. 
on A4. On A4. Rook D8. King E2. King E2 is a move from the game. So probably international masters Latanovic wanted to make, uh, to prove the dominance and uh, convert advantage and position away. But to be honest, I don't see the reason why he didn't take this pawn and take an A5. That looks very simple. But after King E2, Bishop H6. White play, which move? OK, so again, A, B5 and Rook A5 are, are possible, but uh, Well, let's focus on, on king side and how to keep dark square bishop stuck. G4. G4, exactly. B4, G5, bishop G7. And okay, we, we answer the bishop on G7. He is... Uh, Restricted till the end of the game. There is no way to crush our pawn chain. Only, only he can do is to sacrifice a piece for one of the bones. But uh, bishop is uh, stuck on g7. According to rules or to chess principles, what uh, is our next step? Okay, five cannot be a bad move, but uh, the best uh, way to convert is uh, another one. Bishop C5? Mm. Yeah, it's also a good move, but... Um, can somebody remember the, the rule I read in the previous game about uh, trading pieces? We should trade active pieces for opponent active pieces. Which is the only... Okay, the one, of course, James. Threatening bishop b6. So he has to take, and he played h6. Uh, he wanted to open uh, h file and penetrate with the rook. Now show me the way how to neutralize uh, rook penetration on h file. Some prophylaxis move. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
Bishop goes to F2. What is the, the after trade on G5? A rook penetrates on seventh rank and now how to kick the rook from active squares on on each file king f3 King f3, exactly, and king goes to g3 or g2, depends on uh, black's move. Black played the rook h3, and after king g2, he has to go back uh, in his camp. Okay, there is a thousand of ways to convert. But uh, my friend Latanovich chose the same method and he is following Capablanca guidelines to trade active pieces for active pieces. He has to take king takes and now we stayed with two strong bishops against stuck bishop and knight and in addition we have a better structure. King d7, he has to give up somewhere. And bishop d6. And okay, the rest is simple. After taking on e6, there are three pawns up. On c5, it will be third one. So black resigned. The next game. Okay, there is a, some comments that we can see the position arose from Karakan, but it, can, it cannot be Karakan because pawn is on uh, c7. It might be some Scandinavian difference, probably. But the line which the idea, which is very common from Karakan to play knight f6 and take with e pawn on f6. White to play. So take some time, try to assess which. Uh, Black piece can be restricted or trapped and find the best plan for white. Write me ideas in chat. H4. Okay, H4 makes sense. I agree. Bishop F4 also makes sense. Try to uh, exploit bad position of C7 pawn. But the move from the game is very similar to H4 idea. But it's not H4. Can you? Is it F4? F4. Okay, now Bishop B6 was evidently better a way for Black to defend because after F5, he has a simple tactical trick. Intermediate move, bishop g3 check. Hg3, bishop takes f5 and uh, 
black is blown up. But he underestimated white's threats and played h6. f5, bishop h7. Important moment. How to continue now? Not H four. Because age four simply falls to bishop d6 attacking the knight, and black will take a five pawn the next moment. Bishop f4, exactly, ensuring the position of knight, which defends f5 bone, who, defend, who restricts h7 bishop. Keep it stuck because um, f7, f6, double pawns cannot be moved, so at some point, bishop g8 and bishop somewhere on this diagonal is impossible. And everything we need to do now is to keep uh, f5 bone defended. Bishop d6 takes, takes. And now white played castle to over support f5 pawn. And there is nothing wrong with king d2, of course, because rooks are coming to e file anyway. a6 and king f2. What is the white idea? Yes, James, straight of all the rooks. Rook a c8. Okay, bishop d5. Some, some kind of, uh, how to say, not prophylaxis. Uh, white wants to trade the bishop for knight also. And simplifying the position was something he done 
And after bishop b takes c6, white played c4, but my idea would be king f2. But never mind, c4, and what is the only chance for, for black to fight for draw, for fight to activate the bishop? Not C5. Yeah, and G6. And now the main point of this problem. Knight e2 after g f5, knight f4, and bishop is still stuck. So black tried with g5. Now he is threatening to take on, on f5 with bishop. What to do now? G4? G4 and D5, C5. Last is, rest is very trivial because uh, literally we have end game with B uh, sub. So King goes to a5, and after every h5 undermining the chain, we will play h3. And we have this majority on, um, on queen side, and also the pawn is, is weak. So king d7, king d2, king c7, knight g3. King d7, knight goes to h5. And now king c3, a6, c6. Black cannot uh, handle all these weaknesses. Amazing position. Why is the play? So we have seen three problems together. Now try to assess um, which piece is good, which is the bad one, and find the best plan for white.
Okay, James, you are in a good mood today. Does anybody else have some idea? Yeah, Bishop on G7 is bad. A very good conclusion. Yes, prevent G5 at some point, of course. So I agree that Knight D4 is the best move. Harassing the bishop, which is the most active piece of black. And he has to retreat on C8 because all the squares on this diagonal are covered and bishop d7 is impossible because takes takes and e6 check b sub for for white so bishop c8 is the only move and now Bishop c4, attacking the knight, forcing him to go on the rim. If king e8, then knight cb5, and king cannot cover both knight in f7 and pawn c7. If knight goes to h8, after h4, it is stuck because g5 never works. So he has to go on h6. But now g5 is impossible because after f takes g5, knight is hanging. And white played knight e6, bishop e6, bishop e6. So now, can you see the position of bishop to knight? Knights are completely restricted. Cannot go on g8, on f7, f5, and g4. Generally, this is the best opposition. This is the opposition of knight and bishop. The mutual one because on the same way, knight restricted bishop in, uh, in some another type of end games. C6, black wants to push on queen side, the white avoids. King c7, b4, and b6. Do I have an idea how to continue now? Maybe some prophylaxis on king side, continue pushing on queen side, or maybe improve the king. What would be your choice?
White push a5, and I think it's a good decision. Because uh, black cannot answer. He takes a5, is just uh, getting out of control c5 square. So king penetrates on c5. And if he keeps playing something like that, we are easy improving our pieces. Knight goes to d4. And after king c7, final crush. Find the move, please. Does B5 work? Yes, of course. It has to work. C5, Knight B3. Of course, now we defend everything and we will penetrate with B5, with D5 into Black's camp because he is in Tsukzwang. Bishop G7, A6. And the rest is simple. It goes probably to g5, taking first pawn, and bishop against knight, and a7 pawn, so that was an easy end game to convert. Okay, so let's see some games where major pieces are involved. Active pieces and passive pieces. Assess the position of them and find out how white should continue the game.
trade the rook on c2. Exactly. Rook f c8. Let me see. Queen d1. And after queen c6. Sorry. Takes everything and king f1, king e1, king d1, bishop d2. We have time for everything because there are no weaknesses on king side and bishop is stuck on h8. Because of that, after queen d1, he took and played queen b6. What is the logical continuation now? Okay, b4, just weakening c3 square. You are giving him prospects to, to make some counterplay. So after b4, maybe queen c6. White played bishop d2 immediately with idea to trade a pair of rooks. Now, if black decides to trade, queen penetrates on c-file. If he decides to stay to play some neutral move like king f8 or a6, we will take on c8 and offer queen trade because bishop on a trade cannot come back in, in the game so black decided to keep rooks on the board but now we have activity and he hasn't still solved the problem of h8 bishop rook c5 okay so if we play something like bishop b4 maybe we are giving him some practical chances after bishop b5 f5 queen e5 probably we are still winning but 
he has some ideas to make a draw with queen h2 check or maybe queen takes g5 or queen e3 check suddenly we face the problem so this is something we doesn't have to allow so rook c5 preventing bishop sacrifice queen f3 and queen c6 after queen c6 rook c6 game is over i think uh, everybody understands why so the rest is trivial but if you want i can show you is it uh, necessary or not I'm okay. Yeah, okay. So let's go to the next game. Okay, I'm going to to send all games we considered um, Michael's email, so he probably will forward it to you, and you can see the rest in in your chess base. I think it's illogical to waste time on the simple end games. It's better to see some some problems. Okay, so now we are there. Black is 12th world champion Anatoly Karpov. Having powerful bishop pair especially dark squared one, black is much better. His expansion on queen side is so dangerous, but how to proceed? Karpo decided to go for getting more space indirectly protecting c4 pawn. What is the move? B3, exactly. Congratulations, Sasha. And where to go with Bishop? B1 or D1? What do you think? D1. D1, exactly. But because Bishop is still alive, but Karpov's opponent came to B1. And Karpov played now an inaccurate move. Okay, B1, that was decision by Karpov's opponent, who is not so famous player. And that was obviously a mistake. I don't know what was his mind process during the game and every decision is not explainable but people make some mistakes so bishop b1 forever excluding bishop from a play white just for a moment renews threat to capture on c4 carpo wastes time with queen b5 and played queen a4, one move later. And after queen d1, what way should play? 
do black. Bishop G4. No. Uh, knight B7 was the move, but Karpov did something unusual for him. Wasted time with uh, King G7, and White could play Queen F3 and organize a very strength, a very powerful counterplay. But he played knight f3 and now bishop g4 comes, which James recommended. And after queen d2, how to keep a huge advantage here. Yeah, queen a1 is tempting, but it allows white to make a draw. After queen a1, which Karpov played in the game, white could play queen g5 with draw chances queen f6 queen d8 check maybe queen e5 it's very difficult to defend especially in a practical game when you start seeing the ghosts around your king but instead of queen a1 Black should play what and keep the huge advantage. Bishop takes f3, neutralizing this knight, and everything is defended now. Gf3, bishop back to the camp, ensures the king's situation, and then decisive stuff for the game is stuck the bishop on b1 let's go next game game between 
Short and Kramnik, London classic. This I know this game. That was the four knights game. So e4, e5, knight of three, knight c6, knight c3, knight f6, bishop b5. Uh, black to play. How to continue? B5? Yes, B5. If bishop takes f8, this is the trap, then b takes a4, and after bishop e7, f6, and bishop is trapped. White has to play b4 now, and black replies with which move? Rook v8? Yes. Rook f e1. He takes a4, um, he takes c5, f6. I think it's no needed because bishop b6. And uh, so you said b takes a4 and f6, but what after cd6? Oh, that's true. So black played bishop b6 and after bishop b3. That's the key moment of the game.
Bishop b7 is the key. Attacking f3 pawn, white has to defend, and now d5. We are playing against this bishop. <clears throat> Again, double pawn make a mess to bishop because this he is unable to go on c2, uh, neither on a2 than b1. And after every c4, we will take the pawn and bishop is trapped. Rook e5, c6. So we will retreat our bishop on c8 and e6 because he finished his task. We push d5 already and the rest is a matter of technique. Rook a e1, bishop c7, rook 5 e2, and bishop c8. Re-evacuating queenside drops, so black will practically playing with extra bishop. A4. Of course, I think this is not necessary to mention that we just need to as to not to react on this move so keep playing useful moves like bishop d7 and we want to play f6 king f7 and trade every piece stay with one minor piece against this bishop and that's something what kramnik have done in the game And what is the plan, step by step, how black should convert? Which piece we should bring in attack? Oh, bring that king up to the center. Yeah, exactly. And now, uh, Bishop B uh, six check. Yes. Bishop H five. And keep moving the king up uh, to uh, mm. no. no black play just g5 bishop b3 F5, bishop a2, f4, bishop b3, king f5, bishop b6,
G4. If F takes, then King takes and King goes to H3, which is decisive. King F1, and after G3, everything wins. White finally resigned because he's completely stuck. White to play. No. Queen C5? No. But why Queen C5? Well, maybe Black wants to play C5 himself. And after Bishop A8. Take. B takes C5. I think we are faster mm. with our goal. Yeah, that's true. King G3. So black's minimal material gain is absolutely not significant. The most important fact in black cannot use his bishop. In addition, there are many weak dark squares everywhere in black's camp. White queen and bishop are ultimately active and they need support from the king, of course. So, Malik's idea was the best. After B takes C5, so Bishop A8, Queen E4 gives C draw. Because of that, we have to play Bishop B takes C5, A5. And after queen d6, how black can survive? Yeah. <laughs> 
Have I ever mentioned uh, how you should defend inferior end game? Okay, Israel, it's black turn. Move. Yeah, James, of course, pawn a4, making a serious counter queen side, and black has enough counterplay to survive. But after king g3, black played queen b7. And what is the white correct reaction here. We need to check. Queen where? E8. No. Okay, James, your answer is correct, but let's see, does anybody have some idea?
queen takes queen. It doesn't seem logical to trade the queens in circumstances where we have we are pawned down, but it leads us to simply winning end game because his bishop is restricted by his own pawn, by the way. King f4. Game is over now. With the pawn on h5, Lacan survive. He is just unable to handle with the plan like quite executed in the game. King f8, king g5, king e7, bishop e4. Bishop a8, f3, bishop b7. What now? Own G four, of course. If Black takes, then Pawn takes, and H five makes us decisive passer on king side. So Black plays Bishop A eight takes takes and. Pawn f4, of course, because if king takes h5 immediately, then after f5, might be some problems for, for white. Because if bishop moves from diagonal, then c5 opens black bishop and if we take 10 takes and it's not so clear maybe white black threatens c5 at some mo moment but after f4 that's impossible and after king h5 black resigned White to play, assess the position.
Knight takes c5, bishop takes c5. Now try to think about tactical possibilities in position. Um, does b4, bishop b6, b takes, no, uh, bishop e3, uh, and if he takes, king takes e3, b6, then b takes a5, and then we want to move the king to d4 and c5. Does that, does that work? No. Yeah. Yeah, probably it makes sense, but I am not so sure about bishop e3. Does black has to capture this bishop? Maybe king e7 simply works quite enough for him. Because after bishop takes b6, he takes b6, you don't have penetration rook d6. Right. And my rooks are connected, so I am threatening b takes a takes b4 now. Mm -hmm. But after b4, bishop b6, you can go something stronger. c4, of course. Threatening c5. Now, black has one very good response to this. Also, counter tactics.
Rook comes to a7. Idea is to play a takes b4 after c5 because bishop defends rook. So after c5, a b4, our rook is hanging. If we take, bishop takes and removes from the attack. But white found very clever answer on this. Move rook a7. c5 and after a b4 bishop e3 defending c5 pawn if he trades on a1 rook takes a1 and bishop is trapped so only move is bishop a5 and now c6 and okay bishop c6 is obviously one only move now rook take the rook comes to d7 castle and now is the question how to use the best position of Rook on a7 and especially bishop. Well, at first, whites need to joining which piece to guard.
King comes to d3. Rook f7, King c4. So Bishop should stay imprisoned after King b3. If black plays rook d7, cd7, rook a8, there is beautiful tactics. Is anyone able to find it? Rook takes a5. Okay, obviously, if rook takes, then we will promote. And after b takes a5, b6. If he takes, then bishop b6 and promote the next move, taking the rook. And it's easy to convert the end game with bishop up. So after king c4, he played rook a8. And after rook a d1, rook e8. Another instructive moment. White rooks invaded, but how to finish? Evidently, if white attacks c7 pawn, black can resign. But all the routes for the bishop are closed. He played e5. What is the idea? He wants to open diagonal d8, h4. Or eventually, if he takes, take here, check. And if rook e7, then bishop g5 wins the game. He has to take, takes, and d8 is inevitable. So he played rook from f to e7. And now white can do what?
Now we ensured our position on h2c7 diagonal, and we are ready to play bishop f4, because after f5, we will play bishop g5 again. So after king f7, sorry, king f7, how white can finish the game? E takes, and yes, then bishop c7, and black resigned. Defender pass, defended passer on c6 is decisive advantage. So, it will be almost everything for today. Do you have uh, any questions about the topic or generally? Not really. Okay. So, one more time, thanks for joining the lesson. I gave my best and hope you enjoyed. Also, I wanted to mention that uh, I'm offering uh, and I'm available for one-on-one uh, -on -one lessons. Uh, chess of course and i'm teaching players all level and ages and uh, for now i'm making a good results with my students so if you want to ask something or to get some classes feel feel free to contact me uh, melich and mark has my email and contact and i would like to receive some of your messages or to write me some impressions about the classes so thank you one more time and see you on the end of march thanks milosh We'll be looking forward to March and then April. Okay, thank you so much, Melich. Mark, thank you. And everybody else, have a nice evening and see you. Have a good night. Thanks. Welcome.